Hi friends, welcome to another project. This is a 30 amps AC inrush current limiter. It is also called a soft starter. This is the assembled board. Let me show you the bare PCB board. This is the bare PCB board, top side and the bottom side. Okay. I designed the schematic and PCB using Altium Designer and this PCB has been manufactured by the PCB way. The quality is pretty good. Let me come back to the board and explain it. The basic operation of a soft starter is pretty simple. When you connect the input of the soft starter, when you first connect the input to the power, the, uh, the current first uh, passes through this power resistor, okay? And after some time called delay, which in this circuit you can adjust the delay using this potentiometer, a relay, this one, shorts the power resistor and uh, applies the full power to the load because at the first time when you connect the, uh, the load to the power, that time is problem. That time is when the load needs huge amount of current and that current should be limited using this resistor. So after that delay, uh, the full power should be applied to the load and I think I'll almost you can adjust the delay from zero to one second. I think it's enough for most applications. However, if you don't like it, you can you have a code. I, I provide the code in the article so you can change this delay or whatever you like. Uh, I used a microcontroller here, here the cheap 80 tiny Teradine microcontroller, ISP programming interface. And one thing I have implemented in this circuit is something like a fail safe mechanism. It means if this relay fails and does not short the power resistor, then this power resistor quickly uh, becomes very hot, okay? And easily can damage everything, can melt the enclosure and cause a short circuit and many nasty stuff, okay? So I have implemented, implemented something like a feedback. So the easiest or maybe the cheapest feedback was the temperature. So this is a simple and cheap 10K NTC. So, okay, this is an NTC and, ha and this is the silicon glue. So it sense, senses the temperature of the power resistor and uh, provides a feedback to the microcontroller. When a temperature passes uh, through a certain threshold, which I have defined in the code, you can change it if you like, then this relay, then the microcontroller controller activates this relay and the power will be shut off. Okay, it disconnects the load and everything from the power, except for the microcontroller because it should keep this relay active, okay? it turns off the load side completely. So this is what I have implemented in this circuit, a fail safe mechanism for that uh, extreme situation if this relay fails, because this, relays, this relay uh, works frequently. I mean, this is a working relay and this relay only works if a failure happens in this relay through the temperature sensor. Uh, and these two LEDs shows the normal and fault situation. This is a green LED and this is a power LED shows a proper supply connection and this is fault LED. I will show you later on how this works. And this is a this is an AC to DC uh, module which provides the power to the microcontroller and this digital circuit. Let me show you the back side. These are high current carrying tracks and I have exposed these areas and you should ex uh, strengthen these areas using some copper wires and soldering iron, okay? Uh, I have not done that because this is just for testing, but if you want to use this for high currents, definitely you should strengthen these parts, okay? That's why uh, they are not they have not covered by solder mask 
And this isolation gap, I have implemented these two isolation gaps because this is high voltage and this is low voltage. It should be some gap or the creepage between these areas to follow the IPC rules. Okay, nothing special remains here. This is the uh, input, uh, power input, and this connector goes to the load. You should connect the load wires to this connector. I think everything is clear. Let me show you how this works. After that, I will go through the schematic and PCB. All right, I have connected this wire to the input terminal. Then I will connect the wire to the mains input to show you how this thing works. So this potentiometer in, is in this position. Let me show you the operation and delay. Did you see that? Let me increase the delay. Okay, and the maximum delay. Did you see that? Now I want to show you the failsafe, how the failsafe works. I should use my hot air station and apply some heat here to simulate the failure of the relay. Did you see that? This is the failsafe mechanism. So when this relay fails, it means uh, uh, when this relay fails, uh, the, uh, the temperature of the resistor increases and this NTC senses the temperature and the microcontroller activates this relay and the power to the load will be disconnected. Very simple and this LED shows the fault condition. If you are a user and you come to the disk, uh, you see this situation, you are sure that the problem is this relay, okay? Very simple. Let's go to the schematic and PCB. All right, this is the Altium Designer environment. Before I go to the schematic and PCB, I should highly recommend you to not to use any cracked version of this software because all of them are buggy and are infected by malware. So instead of that, just follow the link in my YouTube video description that allows you to download the latest version of the Altium and activate it with a free legal license. So you will use the legal version of the, of the software, full featured, under your name, the same as me. Let's go to the schematic. This is the schematic diagram. This is the PCB layout. As you know, with each project, I also publish an article. So just follow the link in my YouTube video description because I explain the schematic there. I just skip it for the video because it just elongates the video. Before I go to the PCB, let me check this microcontroller. I personally like this one, 80 tiny 13. It solves many, my, many of my uh, simpler projects where I should choose the cheapest option, cheapest and available option. 80 tiny 13. Press the search. Did you see the? Did you see the speed? I think it was faster than Google. Maybe this one. All right. It says the price is around 80 cents, and it's available. And in these distributors, I mentioned the price in the funnel for one, quantity of one. And this is the spe technical specifications of the chip. The frequency up to 20 megahertz and the flash memory size is one kilobyte is enough for this application. Anyway, as you see, everything is in front of you in one page and all of the services of this website is free. Let's come back to the PCB. So this is a two layer PCB board. I can divide the board in two areas from here. The top side belongs to the power components that directly deal with the mains voltage 
and high current. And the bottom side belongs to the microcontroller and the logic circuit to control the re relay, read the temperature, that's potentiometer. So, as you know, uh, in my opinion, the first rule in, in a good PCB design is the component placement. And this is another exa example of a good component placement. So none of, the uh, none of the components from the logic side and the microcontroller side is in this area, totally separated. And even here, I put these creepage areas to follow the IPC standard, okay? So this is the component placement. Another point in this circuit is these uh, exposed area. Let me, let me tell you. You remember from the beginning, these soldering areas, how you can make these uh, areas exposed? You can define your soldering areas if it is on the top or bottom. For example, here, uh, this area is on the bottom, so it belongs to the bottom solder. Solder, okay? I just simply go here and place a line. Do you see that? I can change the width, for example, to 2 millimeter, like this, 3 millimeters. You see that? Very simple. So when you place your line like that, it means you define your own soldering area. So the blue ones, the blue areas are covered by solder mask and these areas are exposed. So you can use some solder and copper wire to strengthen the copper of the PCB copper of these areas. This is a technique. This is a common technique in many PCBs. I'm sure you've seen this in other designs as well. So uh, uh, another point is I, I like and as I think you see in all of my PCBs is this um, uh, polygons. I like to place the ground like that. So uh, this type of grounding uh, helps to stabilize the circuit and reduce the length of the ground path. So I like this method. If you like it also, uh, you can follow this type of grounding and use polygon as a ground plane instead of using uh, a ground track all over your circuit. I think this one is better. Because as I said, it reduces the length of the ground path. Anyway, uh, I hope you liked this project. See you in the next video.